Hi guys, uh, last week we tried making some of these angular jars or, or pots. So this week what I wanted to do was have a, a little go at creating some more angular shapes. So thinking a little bit around angular bowls, etc. Um, following a similar technique to Florian Gatsby, um, who's one of the YouTubers that I follow and I really enjoy his work. So thinking how to translate that kind of round organic bowl shape into something that's a bit more angular and sharp like this. So let's dive into it. So what I'm thinking is something using a similar form to, to this, what I did last week, uh, but in a um, bowl vessel shape. So taking some inspiration from, from ramen bowls, I think what I'm looking to do is create some nice sharp angles like this uh, and create a, a potentially a, you know, a nice ramen bowl like so, ensuring that we've got a consistent thickness. I also like it to have quite a tall foot. Um, so this ranging from probably, you know, from like five centimeters and this ranging from, you know, 15-ish centimeters. Uh, having a, a rough height of also probably 15 centimeters too. Uh, this would be quite a large vessel, so I'm thinking something that uses, you know, a kilogram of, of stoneware clay. And I'll initially have to throw a kind of quite fat round bowl shape like this. Um, it's, it's relatively solid. And then uh, what I'll have to do is come in and carve away those angular forms so it looks you know something potentially like that so that's what i'm thinking um let's give it a go uh see what we what we think i'll probably throw a couple of these um, and hope you you find it useful by just weighing out a, about a kilo of, of stoneware clay. Um, this is recycled clay, so it might not be consistent all the way through and there may be air gaps. So I want to make sure that um, you know, throughout the process, before I start throwing, that I, uh, I wedge it first so that everything's nice and consistent and we don't have any any air bubbles in the in the body of the clay. So I'll probably make three of these um, and then begin uh, wedging it together. So now I'm going to begin just wedging out this clay 
what I want to do is, is push it down with this hand and roll it up, turn it slightly and push down again. And I'll keep repeating that process and that will allow, allow me to make some really, a really nice spiral wedge with the clay. This is something that I'm still, still learning, so I have a long way to go. And if, if you guys have got any tips or tricks on how I might do this a bit more effectively, then just drop me a message in the comments below. And now just slam wedging it together as well. This will really help make sure that all of the clay is nice and consistent. And just forming it into a ball. So that's one ready. Uh, I'll do the same with the other two and then we'll come back and uh, I'll show you the next step on the potter's wheel. So next we're going to prepare the, the potter's wheel uh, and then we're going to lay down some clay and then on top of that we're going to place the, the wooden bat uh, and this will allow us once the bowl is ready to lift the bat away rather than try to lift the bowl off and that can deform it. So we'll be using one of these wooden bats and then just a little bit of clay on top of the wheel itself. So first I'm going to clean it down and then I'm going to give us a, get a little bit of clay for the wheel. So just lightly wet a sponge, I've got a water bucket down here, slightly off camera, and just let that run over the wheel like so. Next with a dry cloth, just remove some of that excess water so that the wheel's damp but not wet. Now I'm going to get some of my clay out of my bag. You don't need much for this. Probably about that much. And then you'll need a, a wooden dowel. I find that if it's wet, um, it, it works much better. going to roll this into a ball, throw it down onto the wheel and then I'm going to use the wooden dowel to press down and it will smooth out the, um, the clay across the wheel. It's a little bit high so I'm just going to use my knuckle initially just to push it down like so. And for this next bit, I'm going to zoom you in so you can see what, I, what I'm doing on the wheel. See that I've made the, uh, the clay roughly flat. Uh, and I'm going to come in with the wooden dowel and just to gently apply downward pressure 
and this will push out the clay and ensure that it's nice and flat. You may find that you remove some excess clay, uh, but that's fine. You can just clean that off later. So once you're happy with the rough size of the thing, you can stop the wheel. You can see the excess clay here. I'm just gonna pull that off and chuck it in my reclaim bucket. And then just clean off the wooden dowel and put it away. We probably won't need it now for the rest of the uh, for the rest of the video, so I can store that away with my other tools. So next bit is that we want to apply the uh, the wooden bat onto the wheel, and to do this, we'll need to score some grooves into the clay, and that will allow us to um, create a larger surface area so that when we stick the bat on top, it, it will stick to it more effectively. Uh, so I've got a little tool that has a, a point like this, but you can really do it with anything. And just place it like that, evenly distanced from the previous ring. And slowly carve in some grooves into the wheel. To keep it tidy, I like to just pull off the excess bits and again, just put them in the reclaim. Just going to pick these up. Okay. Um, again, probably not going to use this tool now, so I can, I can wash it and I'll pop it away in my toolbox. The next thing is the bat. Um, this bat's quite wet because I've just cleaned it, but you want to make sure that it's, it's, it's damp but not wet. So I'm just going to give it a quick wipe and then a slight dry with this. Placing it on top of the wheel, like so. Try and find center and just let it spin. And that's pretty central. So once you've got it nice and centre, apply some downward pressure onto the bat and then around the edges to ensure that it has good contact with all the surfaces and it's laying nice and flat. I also like to just run my finger around the edge and then just clean up the side of the wheel too. So you can see when we speed it up, there's a slight wobble but that's fine, as long as the top is laying nice and flat, which it is, it'll allow us to, to spin it properly. So now, again, I'm just going to wet down the top of the bat, clean off any excess clay that might be there. Slightly dry it. And now we're ready to begin throwing. So I'm going to grab my ball. I'll probably zoom you out a little bit so that you can see a bit more what's going on. Just to take the ball, make sure it's roughly round. Um, I've, I've wedged it previously. So the next thing to do is to take the ball, make sure it's nice and round. I've wedged it previously, so it should be more or less consistent throughout in terms of um, in terms of consistent in terms of like how the clay is distributed. What we want to do now is to cone and center it. And this will ensure that all the particles are facing in the same direction and that, again, the clay is one consistent body. So what I like to do is just roll it like so to create a nice wedge tip. And then I'm going to throw it down onto the wheel like so. So you can see when I turn the wheel on, it spins slightly so it isn't centered. So that's one of the things that we're going to do first is look at centering it. Uh, and we do that through coning and centering. So it ensures that the clay is spinning in the center of the wheel and the body of the clay is nice and consistent. So all I'm gonna do at this stage is just run my hands over the clay to make sure that it's, it's roughly a smooth ball. I'm then gonna try and slide the clay inward slightly. 
and then using my index finger, I'm just going to seal down the ball of the clay with the bat. Now it's important at this stage to um, have the clay nice and wet. I'm still learning, so I, I often have the clay a little bit too wet than I should, but that's something I'm, I'm trying to work on. Uh, but I found for this clay, having it, having it nice and wet really helps with that throwing process. So I've got a wet sponge here that I leave in some water. I'm just going to put my elbow against my leg and put some pressure that way. And it will slowly bring the clay into the centre of the wheel. Again, applying some, some water to make sure it's nice and lubricated. I've now got a nicely centred uh, ball of clay in the, in, on the wheel there. So what I want to do now is just cone and centre it. Uh, again, like I said, it's about getting that consistency, making sure it's nice and central. Um, so I'm going to do that and then we'll come back and uh, talk about the next steps. So for this, I'm going to speed up the wheel so it might get a bit noisy, so I'm not going to talk for a while. Uh, as I kind of go through these motions. So the clay is, is nearly centered now. Um, I think it needs coning uh, one more time just to get it a bit more central. That last one at the end, uh, put it off center slightly. But all I'm doing with my hands is, is cusping it like that, initially putting pressure on the clay with the bottom. And then as I kind of start to push under the clay, it will bulge upwards. So as I feel the clay start to bulge upwards, I move the pressure from the bottom of my hand to a bit more kind of the central of my palm and then use that to create even pressure and push the, the clay column up. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to talk to you about uh, pushing down. Okay, so once you've got the, the clay uh, into a tall column like that, uh, what you want to do then with your hands next is to, to push it back down. So uh, what I like to do is just brace the, the outside of the, the clay column and then I'll, I'll use either the part of my hand to push it forwards and down or sometimes this part of my hand again to push it forwards and down. As I get to the bottom, uh, uh, I often see a bit of a bulge appear so I'll move to uh, pushing down like that and then pulling my palm of my hand down and that just seals it nicely to the bottom of the clay. So I'll show you how to do that now. And, and that's basically it. The clay's slightly uneven, so I'm just going to come in now and correct for it with my hands. Uh, but the, it, it's now probably central enough to start throwing.
grill. So the next step to this is, is opening up the clay. And for that, I'm going to use my thumb. I'm going to place it in the centre and I'm going to push it down into the body of the clay. Often I'll, I'll brace my hand, bear with my other hand like that, and that will just ensure it stays nice and steady. Uh, this is going to have quite a thick base, so I want to leave probably you know, a good inch um, at the bottom uh, between the, where the clay is uh, and, and the, the bat. So I'm going to use uh, another tool to help me measure that, which is this, this like pin needly thing. So I'm going to push down into the clay and then I'll pause and we can look at um, how we use the needle. So I've pushed now down into the clay. I'm going to zoom you in. So you... Okay, so we're going to get the needle and all you do is you just push it down into the clay, use your index finger to hold the mark and pull it up. So you can see here we've got just under an inch, I'd say, of, of clay at the bottom and that will be plenty for us to start cutting into the clay. So I'm happy with that. The next bit I want to do is, is open up the clay. Uh, this has quite a narrow base. I think we went for about five centimetres. So what I do is I dig my thumb in, brace it again, and then I push it out like that. Uh, and I want to be pushing it out just under five centimetres. So somewhere around there is probably fine. Now I'm just compacting down the base with my hand and we've got a slight wobble now. So I'm going to come in and correct for that on the wheel. So all you do is just brace the outside of the walls like that. At this stage, I actually like to just dig in my pinky fingers to kind of cup it in a bit more. And that will just now make it, make it spin nice and flat and central like so okay so now we're ready to start pulling the ceramic vessel so remember from the drawing uh, it wants to kind of go out and then slightly up like that like a bowl um, however for this piece For this piece first we're going to lift it up to get the desired height and then we're going to pull it out and up. So let's try that now. So I lock my hands together. It's quite narrow inside here so I need to be very careful. My outside hand is slightly lower and my inside hand is slightly higher. Um, what I'm doing is bracing the wall from the inside with my left hand and then putting a lot of pressure on the outside wall and begin raising it up like so. So that's the first pull. I think my bowl needs to be slightly higher than that. Just putting some slip uh, on the outside of the bowl there. So I'm gonna try another pull. Now it's really important not to make the, the rim too thin at this stage because once you start opening up the, the bowl vessel, um, this becomes very thin very quickly. So you want to make sure it's nice and thick and we've got a thick and consistent thickness all the way from the bottom of the bowl to the top. So I'm happy with that height now. Um, I may pinch actually a bit more, get it slightly higher. OK, 
Okay, so the next stage of this is now creating that bowl shape. So we've got, we've got a nice height. When I start pulling the next bit, I can also begin to, to increase the height of the bowl slightly. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna pinch, hold my hand in the same position. Now, instead of going up, I'm gonna go out and up like so. So you'll begin to see that the bowl opening will begin to stretch. And you want to do this really carefully so that it can sustain its own weight and everything is consistent. I'm going to do another pull. So we've got this angle now, which is quite nice. Um, but what I want to do when to get to about here is change and come a bit more vertically. So let's give that a go. Get in there. It's relatively similar thickness now throughout. What I'm going to do is just pull the bottom a little bit more because it is still a little bit thick there. Like that. The next part of this would be to uh, to just create more of those angle, angular forms. So what I'm going to use for this is a wooden kidney. I'm going to wedge it in like this, and then I'm going to push the clay against it, and that will allow me to remove the excess slip, but also create some more of those sharp shapes. So I'm going to zoom you in to take a look at that now. So just pushing the clay against the wooden kidney, and that will create those really sharp forms. Just slightly gone off centre here, it's no problem, we can correct for that. And again, similar approach here, pressing the kidney against to scrape away that clay. So that's the first, next bit. Just want to make sure the inside of my bowl is nice and smooth. And I'm just gonna now finish up the tip by using my index finger to compress and hold everything in shape. Finally, just running a little sponge over the rim And on the inside of the bowl to remove that excess slip. So what I'm going to do now is, is let the clay dry out for a day and come back in and just tidy up the inside of the bowl a little bit. Uh, I'll use a metal kidney for that. Um, if, I, if you do that too soon the clay can be quite fragile at this stage so I want it to toughen up a little bit. Uh, before we do any work like that. So the final steps now are to just run the um, wire underneath the bowl itself, being really careful to ensure enough downward pressure, but not enough to warp or misshape the bowl. So I'm going to run it underneath once and then I'm going to go back Use this wooden tool, stick it underneath the wooden bat, and then prise it off like so. Just using a sponge, I'm going to wipe off any excess clay from around the edge.
and just a quick wipe underneath to make sure nothing's stuck to it. And then I'm going to set it aside in this container for 24 hours to dry ever so slightly and come in with the wooden with the kidney later. So let's regroup in a day or so and uh, take a little look. So a day's passed now and the ceramic bowl is, is starting to get a little bit hard. Probably needs another day still whilst the, the base dries out. But what I want to do now is that the form is a little bit harder is to flip the bowl and just using a metal kidney, uh, burnish the inside of the bowl so that it's got a nice smooth texture. If I did this um, yesterday, the bowl's edge would be too delicate and uh, that's likely to cause the form to warp. So by leaving it a day, it allows me to um, ensure the bowl will retain the shape. So the first thing I want to do is lay down some slip onto my potter's wheel like this. And this will allow me to stick the bowl to the wheel properly. Next, I want to flip the bowl, remove the bat, and I'll be burnishing the inside of the bowl. So I'm going to lay it down so it's nice and centre. So, and then just press the bowl onto the wheel so that it forms a nice firm connection. I'm going to zoom you in so you can have a look at burnishing the inside now. So just using the wooden kidney, I just burnish the inside of the bowl and it also allows you to compress the clay to ensure that it's going to have a nice strong base. It also allows you to correct for, for wobbling too. So you can see the, the bowl is spinning slightly off center, so the rim has, has warped a little bit uh, during the drying phase. So hopefully we can correct for that now. If not, we can definitely correct for it in the trimming that will come later. So I've corrected for it a little bit. Uh, I'm going to remove it now and put it away for another few days to dry leather hard. So a few days later, the bowl's now nice and leather hard. What I want to do is, is come back in and trim it all up and start weaving in some of these uh, really clean, sharp edges that we've, we've established during the throwing stage. So I'm gonna zoom you in and we'll take a look at that now. So what I've done first is I've found the bowl's center 
and then use some ceramic pieces to wedge it down and stick it to the wheel to hold it nice and straight. I then take a little tool like so and begin to scrape away the edge. What I'm trying to achieve here is a nice straight line all the way across so that I can build in these angular forms. So I continue to remove more and more clay until we've created that nice straight shape. Next, I'll run a slightly larger tool across the base of the ceramic bowl, and this supports in getting it nice and flat. Uh, it's really important to have a flat surface before you start cutting in the feet, or else you'll end up with uneven, wonky feet. Once I've got it nice and flat, I'll then use a little tool and begin cutting in and just tidying up the centre. So I'll do this by digging the tool down into the ceramic clay, removing stuff to create an, uh, a recess. I want to make sure that the outside of the bowl almost looks as if it travels underneath the feet and joins under it as it's one cohesive piece. And this helps make it look really nice and stable. Just some final touch-ups now around the edge of the feet to make sure that the line between the edge of the bowl and the edge of the foot is really nice and crisp and clean. Here's the final piece. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe.